So the steps to solving a multi-step. The other ones that we were doing before were one and two step. Okay, so for multi-step, we want to simplify the expression. So we were just doing that in the last section. We were simplifying expressions. We were using different properties. What were some of the properties that we were using to simplify? Distributive property. So simplify the expression on each side by distributing and combining like terms. So you might remember that distributing looks like this to, I'm going to do the negative, negative x minus 4. The negatives throw us off the most, okay? So if we were going to distribute that negative 2, what would we get? So this is a negative 2, and this is a negative. This is one of the most commonly made mistakes is with the signs. Okay, and then combining like terms. So what, what do like terms have to have? They have to have two things in common. The same variables and the same, what else? Exponents. And I'll put exponents and variables in because we can have multiple variables. Okay, then we're going to isolate. We're going to basically do the same exact thing we did to solve one or two step equations. We want to isolate using uh, addition and subtraction to get all of the variables and onto one side and all of the constants onto the other side. And then eliminate Basically, use multiplication and division to eliminate the variable's coefficient. That's going to be any number in front of the variable. And then we always want to check, and that just basically means plug in your number and see if it works. So to summarize, at the end, you'll state the solution. So we were writing that in a sentence, but another way to do it... I that I hesitate to show you, and I actually do need to talk about um, how we show work. I'm basically just modeling that for you, but there is a whole entire document on D2L about the guidelines for how we show work, and that's basically what I'm showing you. But the summarized part is another part where I find that people will, a lot of times, they'll just get x equals 5. Well, if you end up getting, you know, 5x equals 25, and then you divide and you get x equals 5, you want to plug that number back in to check, and you also want to say the solution is 5. Now, what you've been seeing a little bit on web work is you've been seeing the set notation. And when we put um, the number 5 into what these are called braces, braces with a C, braces, is that right? Um, then that's basically the same thing as saying your solution is five, but you don't, the problem with introducing the set notation to you guys is that sometimes then you'll want to go and put it around everything. And it's only for when we solve equations. So that's partly why I'm suggesting we do just the, the sentence answer. Okay. So let's read this. Emil has a thousand in savings and saves 60 each month. Jackie has 2,200 in savings and saves 30 each month. To determine when they will have the same amount of savings, and you see here, let X be the number of months that they save. So what do we call that when we take a variable and we say what it means? What is, what is that called? Yeah, define the variable. So in order to solve this, to find out how many months, what would we need to do? Is there anything that we can simplify on each side? No, because we can't combine these. They're not like terms, right? If, a, if an x, we want to get all of our x's onto one side, and we want to get all of our constants. So the 1,000 is a constant. This is what she started with. 60 per month is what she's saving. So even though uh, the other girl, Jackie, she started with more money, but she's saving less money per month, right? So eventually, they'll, she'll, you know, Emil will catch up. 
So what are we going to do to solve this? What did you do? Yes, Megan? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. When you said 1, I thought you meant the 1,000. But that will work too, right? So if I subtract 1,000 from both sides, I get 60x equals 1,200 plus 30x. And now what would I want to do? I want to get all of my variables onto the other side. So I think what you were going to say next was to... Yes... And we get 30x equals 1,200. And that's the difference in how much they started out with. And this is the difference in how much they're saving per month, right? And now what we want to do to get x by itself? By 30. Now, do you guys know this trick? A lot of, uh, I find that sometimes I'll see students have to do long division when they don't have to. If you have a zero in the top and a zero in the bottom, that means they're both being multiplied by 10. You can actually reduce that, right? That's a much easier problem to solve divided by 3, because how many times does 3 go into 12? How many times does 3 go into 0? Zero? zero times. Okay, that's, place, that's uh, about place value. Okay, so that would be our solution. So now a lot of times people will just leave this the answer. It's like, oh, I'm done. But especially with a word problem, we want to have a sentence answer, you know, based on the situation. And we also want to check it. So what would your sentence answer be? 40. What does the 40 represent? Jocelyn? But what, but what is the solution, though? Yeah. Oh, okay. After 40 months, or I like in month 40. That's great, too, because that's more specific, right? In month 40, they will have saved the same amount. And it'd be interesting to know what that amount is. Well, actually, if we take the 40 and we plug it in, 1,000, this is our check, 1,000 plus 60 times 40, this is going to show us if they've saved the same amount and what that amount actually is. So 2,200 plus 30 times 40. And here's some, this is, these are very friendly numbers to multiply, right? 1,000 plus, and we put a question mark here also because we're not sure yet if they will equal, if, it, if we got the right answer. 6 times 4 is 24, 1, 2, there's two zeros for you, zeros on the end, okay? Equals, well, maybe it does, 2,200 plus 1,200. 3,400 is equal to 3,400. So I want to see even the last line of the check. You could even go back to your sentence and write now that they're going to save 3,400 total if you want, but that is a good idea. It's more specific. Okay, any questions about that? All right, let's continue. So you have a few problems here to solve, and pretty much you're just solving these the exact same way. So I don't want to do all of them to steal your thunder. So what would be one that we should do together? Maybe I'll do D. That's the harder one. But it's a, essentially it's the same idea, right? So... I want to, I'm going to start by simplifying each side. Right now, I can't just take my variable and throw it onto the other side or subtract or add, and I can't take my number and subtract or add because it's too cluttered up. So I want to simplify them. Basically, we're not undoing anything. We're just continuing to simplify each side. So a lot of people will go 9 minus 3 first here. But we know the order of operations tells us to do what? Yes. And so we have to multiply. And that's actually basically the same thing as a negative 3 when we distribute. So we have 9 minus 15. Negative times a negative is a positive 12x. Good. 
Now let's simplify, use the distributive property on the other side, negative 2x, and then what would be our constant? Plus 6, and that's because you have the negative times the negative. If you get the wrong signs, it will mess up your entire problem, which is the reason why we have to check. And when we check, we're always going to go back to the original problem to check it in. We're not going to check it in any of our simplified even though it would be a lot easier, right? But we could have made a mistake from one line to, to the other. And the most common errors are usually sign errors. And when I write signs next to a problem that I see you have wrong, it's because a lot of times people will multiply here and they'll get a negative six. That's going to mess up their whole answer. Okay, so now we combine like terms. Over here, 9 minus 15 is negative six. Good. Negative six plus 12x equals negative 2x plus 6. Now, you could have the choice of moving the 12x. You don't have to have x on one side, but the easier move would be to take this x and move it over here because then I don't have to deal with so many negatives. That's a lot of the place where we make mistakes. Add 2x, yep, because I want to undo the, the negative. So add 2x to both sides. Negative 6 equals, oops, what did I forget? See, I can make mistakes too. Plus 14x, lining up our equal sign. No equals in front, just equals in, in the middle. And then what's left over here is 6. Now what? Yeah, so I have to add 6 to both sides. 14x equals 12. Oh, wait a second. Yes, I'm doing this right, right? Do I make any mistakes? Oh, bummer, because it has to be a fraction, doesn't it? Okay, divide by 14. X equals, can we reduce the fraction? They're both even, so divide them both by 2. That becomes 6 sevenths. Does everybody see where we got 6 sevenths from? Now, the reason why I say darn about this is because I really don't want to check the fraction. <laughs> but we will. Okay, and so we would say the solution is 6 sevenths. Okay, I'm going to show you a little tiny bit of a hack, okay, because you can't always use calculators, but sometimes you can. So you could even plug this fraction into the calculator. I'll show you how that works. As just like, especially when you're working on your own, if you don't want to write out the whole thing, maybe. But do the checks, know if it works or not, because I, I make mistakes too. So if I, if I were to take 6 divided by 7, I'm getting a what kind of decimal place? Repeating? Repeating decimal, yes? Okay. So now what's really cool about some of your calculators have this word ANS. And everything on your calculator is, all the second is controlled by, all the yellow, I should say, is controlled by the second key. So if I plug in 9 minus 3 times 5 minus 4 times, I could put 6 divided by 7 here. I could actually put 6 slash 7. That's fine. Or I could plug, I could go second ANS and it will take that decimal and plug it in. But 6 divided by 7, a lot of people ask me, how do you put a fraction into a calculator? Well, fraction is just a division problem, right? 6 divided by 7. Okay, and then I'm going to push, oops, I meant to push enter. 9 minus 3 times 5 minus 4 times 6 divided by 7, parentheses, enter. So my check is going to be 4.28. Five seven dot dot dot. Okay, actually that that's where that repeats is all the way to, you know, the five sevenths is the repeating decimal. It starts repeating again at here two eight six. That's rounded. Okay, so is that equal to the other side? Negative two times six divided by seven minus three. And notice I had to use the negative for the negative two and the minus for the minus, okay? And that's the same thing, woohoo, 4.2857, you know, okay. So my check works out, I just did a calculator check. If you have 
you know, fractions. I mean, we can also work with fractions. We're going to need to work with fractions. But, you know, especially if you have a calculator on that portion of your exam and you have a question like this, then you could do a calculator check. Does everybody understand how I use the calculator to help me check it? It's kind of nice, right? It's helpful. Okay, why don't you guys go ahead and try...